This is Matt Garrett. I'm doing a, a rebuild of a tune port fuel rail. And so this is all dissected right now. And this is from an actual 88, but 85 through 91 are pretty much gonna be exactly the same. And uh, this is one of these parts that, you know, I think newer cars, they have these type of systems are plastic and they're just disposable throw away. But this is a complex serviceable system here. And when it's all together, it's probably a little more familiar when you see it with the, the tubes in there and the injectors in there and the fuel pressure regulator right here. So these things have some that many O-rings in them, quite a bit. And these O-rings around the corners, like here, will start leaking, especially ethanol fuel use, uh, car sitting for a while. If you went and did a motor project on your tune port car or you have just let it sit a long time, well, you may find these things start spraying fuel from here. And uh, of course mine uh, was taken apart for a while. This one didn't leak that I know of before, for sure, but it may leak now since it's been taken apart now, so I just wanted to be safe and do it. Now, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. They have these kind of clamps right here that hold the uh, the pipes in place. And so, basically, you, sli you slide the pipe in with the O-ring, you get the proper O-ring, do one at a time, is what I suggest. I, these are all the, uh, the tube O-rings here, so those are the old ones. Now, here's the weird one. It's kind of hard to take this fuel pressure regulator off. Now the fuel pressure regulator is actually sitting right there. I took it off of that. That's an adjustable one. So what you've got here is that has to go on in that like that. And then the other one has to be pushed on the same time. So it has to go on as a series of things and it's got clamps there. Now this is the part that I just educated myself on. So you have an O-ring here and you replace it. Now you think this tube is part of this fuel rail. It's not. It's force fitted in there with another O-ring. I'm going to show you. It's just going to move a little bit. See that moving? So it has another O-ring in there. You have to pull that out. So some people may go through and build all this and forget to do that one and it leaks there. Oh boy. You know, just, a, just a project. Which is why I say Tuneport's one of the, the most complicated, at least American cars to work on, period. I mean, there are just so many parts, so many different things. So this is going to be the first part. I've got it all torn apart. I'll show it what it's like back together in another video. Uh, but of course, when you get these apart, make sure you run some carburetor cleaner through it. And of course, I've we did that and air hosed them all out really well. So it was clean, pretty clean to begin with. Like I said, I may or may not have had an issue with this, but I just wanted to be safe because we're doing so much and I want it all to be fresh. But uh, on your injectors, and that's a whole nother, you know, uh, can of worms of issues and things like that. These are not stock injectors. Uh, they're actually a factory injector. That's, that is a, uh, a Typhoon injector. It's a 38 pound injector. Way, way too much for a tune port car. Absolutely insane much to for a tune port car. But this is a supercharged tune port car. And these things are, are adjusted on fuel pressure through an FMU, which is another device. And I'll show that later on. Uh, and that's boost sensitive. So basically we set the, the base fuel pressure on these things, which your base fuel pressure on a tune port is gonna be about 38. And when you remove the vacuum to the, to the uh, uh, fuel pressure regulator, it'll go up to about 43, 45, which is, is what you want. So usually 38 to, to 45, somewhere in that range, if your system's working well. This one ends up going from about, we lower it down to about 32, to underutilize the injectors when the car is low and then under boost, it goes up into the 50s. So it makes it spray a lot harder, but that's a hot rod application on a stock application. All your tune ports are gonna have 24 pound injectors in them. And those are not 24 pound Ford injectors or 24 pound G injectors. They, they rate them at different uh, rates. And uh, one of the things, if you need some, they make replacement injectors now, especially if you have Moltex. Any of the tune port injections that have the gray, in, uh, gray injectors, which are going to be roughly 89 uh, to 92, you need to get those things out of the cars. They're horrible. They, uh, they lock up, they create all sorts of running issues. And of course the older ones, which are the pencils type like this one, but you're certainly not a modern injector, and I'd rather have a modern injector in this thing, but the more modern ones do not take the over 
pressure as well, they'll lock up too. So these will take over pressure. So these are really not a great efficient injector like some of the uh, generation four ones, but they work under this application. I recommend you get the, uh, uh, just some replacement injectors. South Bay fuel injection, if uh, you're in tune for it, you've probably heard of them already. Get yourself some there. Don't try and over inject the car because you will have problems, especially, you know, unless you've really built a, I mean, a massive motor, then you can start doing things like this with FMUs and different fuel pressure. But on a stock application, even up to like 300, 320 horsepower, just go with the 24 pound injectors and adjustable fuel pressure regulator, you're good. Now the O-ring seals for this kit, this is where we got them from, they're eBay. These guys are uh, efiwiring.com, so they seem to be pretty good. Haven't put them on yet, but the next video they will be on there. And if I have a problem with them, I'll let you know, but I don't think so. They look pretty self-explanatory and same type of stuff that came out of the car. Uh, I'm sure you can go and source all of these, you know, at a, at a hardware store if you wanted to, but these guys put them all together for you in a package. So it makes it a lot easier. That's about it. So when this goes back together, it'll be just like it was. Uh, and on injectors, when you clean them out, a lot of these injectors have a little screen in the top like this. And uh, basically what I do to clean these injectors out, if you don't you know, want to send them in service, we put power to them with a nine volt battery and that'll open them up. I actually use a little bit more advanced thing than a nine volt battery. We use a power supply right here, but we run it about nine volts and that'll hold it open. And then I'll spray carburetor cleaner through the back, backwards and forwards, but do backwards force to clean that screen out. And then forwards and you run air through them while they're open and you can, you'll add power and you'll hear them open and close. It's pretty cool if you've never done it before. It'll go pop, 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 pop. So uh, basically you're simulating the injector running and running nine volt DC through them, it'll, it won't hurt them. It'll, it'll, you can leave them open probably for the rest of their lives, I would imagine with that and it'll, it'll close up. Um, but that's kind of it. So we're gonna clean those up too. And uh, that's the beginning uh, midpoint of a tuned port injection fuel rail rebuild. So I'll go through another video later after this, but. This is kind of your main one. That's something that you think is in there, but it actually still has an O-ring in it. And if you have a leak there and you build all this back, you're still gonna have a leak there if you don't pull that up and change that O-ring behind there. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now on this video. I'm gonna pull it all the way out. Let's see, we can do it without scratching it up. I don't really like to do this stuff, but it comes out. I'm trying to hold that. There we go. So now, you see it's got an O-ring on that side. So basically we wanna change both of those. And that is one of the hidden pieces that you would, I didn't even know came out. I thought it was all, when I've done these before, built with the, uh, the unit. And the only thing that cued me off to it is they had one extra uh, O-ring. So you can thank these guys for including that, which made me go, where the heck does that go? And that's where it goes, so. That's, that's it. Thanks for watching.